ain't hit different when you got to sit in it. You know what I'm saying? And I felt that one. No, nah, for real. No, nah, for real. And, and guess what? There's only one power, you know, that can deliver that kind of blow, you know, and that's the universe mm-hmm. and whatever you put out there, you know. So a lot of me being unbothered have to do with knowing like, oh, OK, I don't even got to, you know what I'm saying? I really only act like I'm from Inglewood unless I really have to. But, but- What's up, guys? Welcome to another Journey Through 30, the first one for November. Definitely going to be a quick one because I have come to a realization. Please don't pay my radiator no mind. That's the hissing that you hear in the background. I wish it would actually stop, but it's November and it's starting to get cold. So, so we this need- Journey Through 30 is basically like a self-reflection type vibe. Okay. So I've come to the realization that... I am definitely a full-fledged Pisces. And by that, I mean this. I am definitely a people pleaser. I'm definitely a... What's the word? Put on my cape type person. I'm definitely in that When it comes to people that I care about, I go above and beyond i definitely overplay my role i definitely do that which is a gift and And as i reflect on my relationships whether it's family intimate friendships those type of things like i each situation i notice certain things about me each situation or how things play out i notice where it's either gone too far or I'm downplaying how I feel because I want the person that whatever is going on, I want the person that's involved to have a certain type of feeling. Like, I don't want them to feel story time. When I was a kid, I'm going to say probably like sixth grade, I always had like, you know, maybe one or two people close, like a close friend. And in the sixth grade, I remember... Well, basically, let's just put it this way. I've had a fight in school from pre-K all the way up to, like, 10th grade. I used to have a fight every freaking year in school. Like, it never failed. It always used to be over, like, people feeling that they could take advantage of me, right? So, it'll be... I'm not a boisterous person. I'm not a out there type of person i'm always like low-key and out the way like and i think i've been like that since i was a kid like i don't really like attention i like attention but it gotta be attention from certain people and certain things when it's like a mass or a group setting like i don't like it like i hate it it makes me nervous it gives me always been the type of person to like observe people like you have a now nah, that sounds weird, but I've always been the type to study people, especially like my close circle. Like I would study, I'm going to use my family, for example. Like I would study my immediate family. So I know like, I know if something was to happen, I would know how they would react or what they would say. Like I would anticipate or I would know beforehand how shit would play out before it played and out. And that carried out throughout my friendships, relationships, all of that, right? So, I'll be so in tune with somebody that I could, like, foresee certain things. So, right? now, fast forward to the story that I was going to tell you when I was in the, about the sixth grade. And I had a best friend. And I had, you know, like a three a trio. It was a trio. So, one day, one of the best friends that I had. Was just acting funny. Acting real weird. And I tried to ask her, like, what was going on? Nobody said anything to me. Maybe about after 20 minutes of trying to figure things out, I never got an answer. So, I just left it alone. That's me. I don't like to harp on things. Like, I'm going to ask you maybe once or twice what's going on. And if you don't tell me what's going on, I'm going to just leave it alone. Because I'm not going to keep begging nobody to tell me what's wrong. Long story short... I found out by lunch that this girl that I had beef with had told, like, basically the entire 
sixth grade not to talk to me, right? So at first, yeah, you a little kid, you go through something like that, like you feel sad or whatever the case may be. But then that initially wore off, maybe about a day or two that wore off. Because after a while, I just don't be caring, right? So I found out who the girl was that told everyone not to talk So me and this girl, I approached the girl to find out, like, what's your problem? We're not friends. Why would you tell everyone basically the whole school assembly the whole sixth grade not to talk to me like what's your deal the girl didn't have an issue the girl didn't have no real problem with me she was just saying whatever because again she felt that i was an easy target and that she could just be a bully so what ends up happening is me and this girl gets into a fight in class right minding my business i'm up front she in the back and she going off right ignoring it then finally, she said something that ticked me off, and I just went at her, like, all right, so now we really going to fight, because what is your problem? Like, if I'm not bothering you, you shouldn't be bothering me. Like, leave me in my lane, and you're in your lane. Like, whatever. So it ends up being, like, a really bad fight. School safety had to get involved. The teachers, the parents, everybody got involved. And I ended up <laughs> getting on suspension, because they was like, could have went left, and all this other stuff. She could have pressed charges. That's how bad the so fight was. So, that was my first lesson into I have to control my anger. Because as quiet as I am, like, I could go there. And then with me, there's no gray area. It's either on or off. So, as an adult, I'm learning to stay in the gray area, right? Because I know my temper. I know how I could get. So, right. fast forward to high school. I go through the same thing in the 10th grade. Um, so this girl was just doing the most and it ended up being like a jumping situation, like against me and my guy sister and the girl that had an issue. Like it just turned into, it was havoc to the point where the fight got so bad that they either gave me a choice. Either I go on a two week suspension or I get a transfer out of the school. So I just opted to get transferred out of the school because Every year up until that point, I've been getting into a fight. And I, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why. And it's not like I antagonized. It's not like I agitated. It's not like I incited it. I literally just be in my own lane. Seriously. But even, after, even though that was my last fight, in 11th grade, I became, like, combative. Like, it was all best off. Like, okay. I'm not going to let people play with me no more. Like, that's it. I'm going to just be the bully that's trying to bully me. So, in 11th grade, in a new school, people learned to not bother me. I still kept the same thing. Still kept my circle small. Still wasn't dealing with a lot of people. I would say hello, whatever. But I was more so of the quiet but cautious. Like, I wouldn't talk much. I would try to be involved with certain things when it calls for group activities. But for the most part, I stayed to the people that I'm used to. Like, chilling on the block, my friends on the block, or dealing with whoever I had to deal with at the time. Or even, 11th grade was when I had my first boyfriend. Like, even him. Like, he was ignorant enough for the both of us. Like, I didn't really have to wild out like that because he was like brings that. me to this factor. So, relationships. I really don't consider, like, my teenage relationships something very serious. But when I became an adult, like, and I was in a relationship with whatever guy at the time. Like, I noticed I would do the same thing. Like, I would watch, I would observe, learn their behaviors, their mannerisms, their, you know, basically everything you you should know because if you with somebody you should know your partner and how they would act in certain situations like just their persona right you so, should know that. i noticed with relationships i would either have one extreme or the other so i would either have someone like really sweet really timid really quiet i would have like a straight rough neck thug ignorance to the level like it was never No, in between. Like, I would either have one or the other. One extreme or the other Don't get me wrong. Having the rougher side is exciting. But it gets tiring after a while. Like, 
Not every day is a brawl. Not every day is a fight. Not every day is a something to be petty with. Like, that should get tiring real fast. But then, on the other hand, when you have somebody that's real timid, real quiet, real shy, real out the way, real laid back, it's a little boring because it's like, I got to be the excitement for the both of us. Now, that, that that's, just, that's just where it's just like, all right, come on now. But come on. as a grown adult at 34... Boring is fun. Boring is out the way. Boring is no trouble. Boring is less stress, less headache. It's easy to maintain. Too much rah-rah and too much ray tay It so, Not every day. This transfers into how I feel about friendships. So, with friendships... I am extremely cautious. I am extremely observant. I'm extremely sensitive. I'm an I'm extremely physical. So what I mean by physical is I will show loyalty. I will show intent. I will show consistency. When it comes and to I friendship. And I think that's why a lot of my friendships, a lot of people gravitate towards that. Because not for nothing, a lot of the friends that I've had, that I have and that I've had, had problems with loyalty, consistency, um, communication, stability, accountability, stuff like that. Like, they've had issues with that. So, I try to, like, X all of that off the board so that you know, with me, you have a solid friend like you don't have my loyalty is never questioned even if times are bad or if times are good you don't have to worry about that at least with me that's how I approach then again in my friendships because I'm trying to maintain that I let a lot of stuff go like if something is bothering me or something happens I'll vocalize I didn't like this or I don't like this approach or you know that could have been a better way to handle or like i would i would approach it like that in a soft manner i'm not going to be wilding out because i don't feel that i also feel that in friendships you should be able to if there's something wrong you should be able to come to your friend talk about the situation and find a resolve right that's the right thing to do not dismiss someone and then validate your feelings. And then if I'm validating how you feel, but then you're dismissing how I feel, then that's, that becomes a problem. That becomes an issue because now it makes the relationship look one side. I've had issues with friends where I would let shit go too far. And I would consistently think about how they would feel or how they would interpret things. So I watch what I say. I don't just go off and go crazy i literally limit what i say because i'm listening to how you feel but i'm also telling you how i feel and what it is right because we should be able to have a dialogue we should be able to speak clearly and communicate clearly without certain problems right so that's how i this is what i mean by earlier how that could be a gift and a curse when it comes to me because because I'm listening and because I'm taking an account to how the other person may feel or whatever the situation, then my feelings and how I feel gets disrespected or gets disregarded, right? So my very first best friend, I kid you not, I had gotten to like a major accident, which you guys know if you go into Journey Through 30 and the previous ones, you know what kind of car accident I'm I've talking about. I had a friend that I considered a best friend tell me I don't give a F about your injury you were supposed to call me and do da 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 if I'm in the hospital and I'm recovering and I'm trying to learn how to walk I'm trying to learn how to how are you going to tell me that my injury doesn't mean anything because it doesn't suit your program see how that sounds like it sounds very one side. I had another issue with another friend that I call my best friend. This is a childhood one from like sixth grade. So I remember her saying some stuff 
that I heard through another person that I am basically using my injury. <laughs> I'm using my injury to try to get close to someone so that they could be my friend. It's like some ill shit. So then I approached her and I told her, I'm like, why would you even think that? Like, if we're in a group setting, right? So who, why are you the friend monitor? Why are you the friend police? Like, oh, you can't talk to this person because that's my friend. What? Girl, ain't nobody trying to take your friend. Like, really. And the funny part about it was that one particular situation became out so ill that the whole friend group doesn't even talk to that person no more. Like, it was just, like, real crazy. Another relationship that I had, I had my ex. When I first got diagnosed with breast cancer, he was going through his little situation. And I remember him telling me one time, you're using your cancer situation as an excuse. And it was basically, like, I was going back and forth whether I should go back to work or not. So, that's the context of the conversation. So I'm like, what? I use my cancer situation as an excuse. Like, boy, do you know what you're saying? Like, do you know how it's on? So, again, I'm giving y'all intel or insight of how I see things and how I hear things, right? So that's also a thing that I have. Like, with me, you have to be very careful about what you say, how you say it. And you got to be careful about what words you use. Because I interpret words... And I interpret your tone and what you say in a certain kind of way. So, it it could sound like you're just upset. But to me, it'll sound like you're being disrespectful. Or you're ignoring whatever it is that's going on just to be combative. Like, you get... You, this is why they say it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And watch how you talk to certain people type thing with me. So, that's what I mean by earlier. I have... It's a gift and a curse. It really is because I noticed, like I said, this was my reflection that I was saying earlier. I've noticed that I let certain things go on too long out of loyalty, out of respect, out of consistency, out of trying to show a person if they've been abused or anything that there's life outside of that. Like, I'm not the person trying to hurt you. You get what I'm saying? So it's a gift and a curse. But at this big Jurassic age, I'm just learning to bow out gracefully, move in silence, leave people where they are, make people stand on business because I'm not going to do the back and forth. I'm not doing it. And then if you tell me that you don't want to deal with me or you don't want to be bothering me, that's even more reason for me to just... Like, there's nothing more to be said. There's nothing more to be done. Like, I would never, like I said, words with me really mean something. So, I leave people where they stand. So, moral of the story is make people stand on business. Be careful what you say, what you do, and how you treat people. Because you never know how other people may take things. So that's it. That's the end of Journey 230 and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.